Chapter 19, The Header Adam explains in plainness the law of the gospel and the commandments of Jesus Christ. Love your neighbor as yourself. He explains the sacredness and importance of fidelity in marriage. 1. And Adam continued his teachings, saying, our eternal mothers taught us that we must obey the laws of the kingdom of God in order to ensure that we would be guaranteed the happiness that each of us desired for ourselves. 2. And now I would that ye should know that these laws were also given unto your mother Eve and me upon our expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Behold, these laws are eternal and are the same in the world in which our eternal parents reside as well as in all the kingdoms that exist. And these laws ensure order in the universe, and that the end of these laws, which is happiness, may be realized by all those subjected to these laws. 3. And if ye abide by these laws throughout the days of your probation upon this earth, then ye shall also have peace and order among you here. And for this purpose were they given unto us after we left the Garden of Eden. 4. And these laws are based upon one great law which encompasseth all of the commandments that God hath given us. Yea, it encompasseth all of the commandments that shall ever be given unto you and your children for ever. 5. And this is the law on which all other commandments are based, that was given unto us by the Lord, even that ye should do unto others what ye would have them do unto you. 6. Now, from this law, the Lord hath given us specific instructions or commandments that we must follow to accomplish the purpose of this law. 7. For he hath commanded us that we should not be angry one with another, and that we should have a respect for the opinions of each other, and rejoice in the freedom that we each have to express our own opinion without the fear of repression or anger from another. 8. For this anger can cause us to strike out at our neighbours, and harm them for that in which we feel that they have wronged us. And why is it that we feel that they have wronged us? Is it not that they do that which doth not agree with us? And why should we believe that our opinion of that which they think or do is that which is right? Yea, it might be right for us, but might not be right for our neighbour. 9. And this anger can escalate and cause ye to strike out against your neighbour. Now I say unto you that this is most abominable before God, even that ye should touch your neighbour without first receiving the permission to do so. For upon doing so ye have taken away the free agency of your neighbour, for they have the right not to be touched by you, if it so be their desire. 10. And the eternal law that is violated by anger is the law of free agency, which guarantees to each of us the right to act according to the desires of our hearts. And according to this law, ye have the right to become angry with your neighbor if that be your desire, even though your desire would be contrary to the commandments of God. But ye do not have the right to strike out in anger and harm another, for your neighbour did not use his free agency to desire that ye should strike him. 11. Therefore ye have been commanded to respect one another, and give unto each other this worthy respect that each of us deserveth. And ye should not be angry because ye do not understand that which your neighbour doeth with his free agency, for he will be held accountable for that which he doeth, and ye will not be held accountable. Therefore, why should ye be angry? 12. And the Lord hath commanded us to have kind thoughts towards each other, and to not be involved in rumours or gossip in any manner concerning another. For if we, with our own eyes, do not see that which our neighbour hath done, then why think ye that ye can trust the words of another to tell you the truth regarding that which they claim they have seen? For that person who is making an account unto you of the actions of another would not do so unless he was angry with another. For what other purpose would there be a reason for rumour and gossip except to make an account of those actions with which we do not agree? 13. And the Lord hath commanded us to refrain from listening to those who would make a bad account of the actions of another. 
and he would that we should know that even if the account of these actions is true, we should respect that this person hath his free agency to act, and he hath commanded us not to become angry when another person useth his free agency to act according to his will. 14. For our father allowed Lucifer and those that followed after him to act according to the laws of free agency, and he did not become angry with them, but he loved them and blessed them. Nevertheless, he was bound by the eternal laws of heaven in the limit of that which he could do to save them, they having acted according to the law using their own free agency. 15. And nothing good can come from an angry heart, for he who is angry places his spirit in a state of rebellion with his body, and for this reason the body reacteth to the anger of the spirit, thus causing sickness and poor health. 16. And the Lord hath given this commandment unto us, that there might not arise contentions and disputations among us. For where there are contentions and disputations, war soon followeth, and many souls are sent home to the God who gave them life unprepared, for the state in which they shall be received. 17. And it hath been with great sadness that I have watched death by the hand of another entering among you because of the anger of which I have spoken. For even my beloved son Cain did submit to the anger of his heart and murdered his brother Abel. And that day I lost two sons, for it became necessary that I banish my beloved son Cain and his wives, and his sons, and daughters from among us, that we might guard ourselves against these terrible things. 18. And I would that ye should know that I counseled with Cain, and commanded him that he should repent of the thing which he had done. But his heart was hardened against my words, and he would not give heed to the tenderness of my love for him. And he kept the anger that he felt for his brother inside of him, and would not release it from his soul. 19. And the Lord hath commanded us that if we have something amiss between each other, that we should reconcile our differences between ourselves in love, not allowing anger to control us and cause us to hate. 20. And it is also with great sorrow that I was forced to construct prisons among us, wherein we could hold those who would not give heed unto the commandments of the Lord, and who could not control their anger. And in these prisons I have caused that they should be taught and counselled and have shown unto them a greater love than that which they experience without the walls of the prisons, that they might know in what way they should act when they are released from these prisons. 21. For if these are imprisoned because of their anger and are therefore shown greater examples of anger and hate within prison, then when they are released, they shall be much worse off than when they first entered into prison. Thus have I commanded our prisons to be places of instruction and love and tender feelings, that they who are therein might have an example set for them. 22. And the Lord hath commanded us that we should not return evil for evil, but that we should return good unto all. For this is what we would have others do unto us. For when your neighbour doeth something evil unto you, he doth not believe at the moment that he is doing this thing unto you, that his actions are wrong. For if he believe that his actions were wrong at the time that he doeth evil unto you, or if he believe that his actions were evil, then he would not have done this thing unto you. 23. And Satan hath been given power to tempt us, and cause us to take that which is good as something that is evil and likewise he causes us to take that which is evil as something that is good. And in the moment that our neighbour is enticed to do evil unto us, Satan can tempt him, and cause him to justify this evil thing as a thing that is good at that moment. Nevertheless, Satan doth not have the power to tempt us beyond our ability to resist him, thus making us fully responsible for our own actions. 24. But because of the power of Satan and the weakness of our neighbour in resisting his enticements, many times our neighbour will do evil unto us, believing that it is good. And if it so be that we do evil back to him, even though at the moment we might justify it as that which is good, because of the thing that he hath done unto us, 
we have disobeyed the commandments of the Lord. 25. And the Lord gave us this commandment, saying, Behold, I say unto you, that ye shall not resist evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. 26. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. 27. For there have been many of you who have come before the judges that I have caused to be set up among you, to administer the laws that we have established among us to maintain peace and order. And ye bring unto them grievances against your neighbour. Now when you do this, ye have already broken the commandments of God, in that ye have become angry with your neighbour, and have the desire to take the matter of your anger against him before a judge. And in this ye do sin. But this is not the end of your sin, for ye cause him whom you have sued to also sin, because in his anger he will defend himself before the judge. 28. And no good can come of the grievance between you. But the Lord hath commanded any of you who are taken before a judge by your neighbour who hath a grievance against you, to give unto your neighbour all the things that he hath asked of you in his grievance against you. In other words, he hath commanded you to not defend yourself, but to submit to the demands of the grievance. 29. And if ye submit to the demands of the grievance against you, then ye are not angry because of it. And if you give what is asked of you by your neighbour, then ye have stopped the cause of the anger that your neighbour hath against you. 30. And if ye are struck by your neighbour, and ye return the blow unto him, then ye are angry when ye deliver this blow unto him. And in his anger he will return again and strike you. And then the anger of both of you will rise and cause that ye both shall sin before God, even until ye have committed the most grievous sin before him, even the sin of murder. 31. Therefore the Lord hath commanded you to turn the other cheek, that your neighbour may strike you again in his anger. But ye shall not be angry and strike back. And when ye have offered both of your cheeks unto him, that he may strike them, then the end of his anger might be satisfied, and both your lives may be saved. 32. And the Lord hath commanded us, saying, Behold, I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. 33. Now this commandment which he hath given unto us cannot be given with any more plainness than that which the Lord hath spoken. 34. Behold, we are commanded to love each other in spite of what might be done unto us. For are we not all brothers and sisters who belong to the same Father who hath created us? And doth not the Father love each of us the same? Yea, I know that the Father loveth each of us the same, for he is no respecter of persons, and loveth the sinner like unto the prophet. And he loveth Satan as he loveth each of us. For behold, Satan was our brother in the beginning. 35. And we have been commanded to do good in all situations, and love our enemies as well as our friends. And it is easy to love our friends, for even the most evil among us love their friends and hate their enemies. 36. But a sure judge of the righteousness of a man or a woman is not in how they love their friends, but in how they love and treat their enemies. And if there are any among you who hate another, then what reward have ye when ye love your friends? For ye shall be loved also by your friends, and this is your reward. But when ye love your enemies, then they will not return unto you this love, but your reward will be given unto you by God. 37. And now, my beloved children, I would that ye should understand that this flesh meaneth nothing before God, but that which is in the flesh is of God. And if ye lose this flesh by obeying the commandments of God, then by losing this flesh ye shall be received by God. But if ye keep this flesh because ye have disobeyed the commandments of God, then ye will not be received by God, but will receive the rewards of the flesh, which rewards are contrary to the happiness of God. 38. 
And I know that when my son Cain confronted his brother Abel in the field, his brother did not become angry with him, nor did he fight back to save his life. But in his final words, he blessed his brother Cain and forgave him for that which he was about to do unto him. And my son Abel was received by God and given a just reward. 39. And Cain has received a just recompense for that which he hath done. And his reward was that of the flesh, which flesh became his curse and caused him to lose the happiness that he could have enjoyed among us if he would have obeyed the commandments of God. 40. And if your neighbor rises up against you to take your life, trust in the commandments of God and bless your neighbor and do not fight against him. And if ye will do this, ye shall be received by God. And if ye defend yourself and take up arms against your neighbor, then ye shall gain the reward of the flesh. And this reward shall be the continual hatred and anger that shall exist among you for many generations. And there shall be no peace among you. 41. And I ask of you, is it not better that ye die without anger at the hand of your enemy and be received by God? than it is to be slain in anger in a war against him? For in one instance ye shall die in righteousness, and in the other ye shall die in your sins. And if ye believe that by your strength ye can slay your enemy before he slayeth you, then ye are preparing the way whereby the war that ye have caused shall be the means of slaying many of your sons and daughters by the hand of the sons and daughters of the enemy that ye have slain. 42. And if you have hate towards another, ye shall not experience the state of happiness with the Father that he hath promised you after ye are dead. For ye will be in the spirit world with those whom ye have hated. And in that world ye shall not have the flesh that ye have at this time. And without this flesh, what cause can ye give unto your anger for another? And your anger shall cause you to remain in a state of misery. And without the flesh, ye will be unable to act upon this anger. 43. And ye shall see all of your brothers and sisters, and realize that we all share the same eternal parents. And ye shall realize that ye have disobeyed the commandments that they have given unto you, concerning the way that ye should act towards each other. And do ye think that ye can exist in a state of happiness knowing these things? 44. Therefore hath the Lord given unto us these commandments, that we might live together in peace and harmony, one with another, enjoying the wonderful blessings that the Father hath provided for us as his children in his eternal worlds. 45. And if we do not learn these commandments, and we are not able to abide by them forever, then we will not be able to dwell in his kingdom. For he alloweth none who do not obey his commandments to enter therein. 46. And he hath commanded us, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye mate, it shall be measured to you again. 47. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in the eye of thy brother? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull the mote of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? 48. Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of the eye of thy brother. 49. Now, this doth not mean that the Lord doth not want us to discern between good and evil, and choose the good over the evil, and cling to it. But who among us hath the right to determine what is good and what is evil? For unto some what is evil might be good unto others, and to others what is evil might be good unto some. Therefore, if we must judge the actions of others, we must make a righteous judgment. 50. But I say unto you, my dear children, that it is better that ye do not judge at all, but leave all judgment to our Father, who hath created us all, and hath given us our free agency to choose for ourselves that which is good and that which is evil. 
and he loveth all of his children, whether their actions be good or whether they be evil. He loveth them the same. 51. For what think ye that ye are better fathers than our Father in heaven? And if one of your children doeth evil in your judgment, do ye love him less than those of your children that do that which ye judge to be good? And if ye, being evil fathers, desire good for your children, then how much more would our Father, who is righteous, desire good for all of his children? 52. And it is a hard thing that ye should determine what is good and what is evil on your own accord. For ye know not the circumstance in which the action of another hath taken place. And therefore ye have no way to judge righteously whether or not this action is good or evil. For in one circumstance the action could be good, but in another circumstance it could be evil. 53. And if ye judge an action of another to be evil, and it is actually good, then the condemnation resteth upon your shoulders for the judgment ye have rendered. And if ye judge an action of another to be good, and it is actually evil, then this condemnation also resteth upon your shoulders. 54. For if ye judge the action of another, and ye have determined in yourselves that this action is evil, then ye shall show prejudice and bias against this action. Which prejudice and bias could cause you to have anger against this person? 55. And with this anger ye have sealed yourselves up to the prison, or the state of misery in the spirit world of which I have spoken. And if ye find out after death that the action ye have judged was not an evil action, but a righteous action, then ye will not have the power to reconcile with him whom ye have misjudged in the flesh, because ye are in the spirit, and a recompense for prejudice and bias and anger cannot be given in the spirit world. And ye shall not come out of this prison, or in other words, ye shall remain in this state of misery until the consequences of your judgment have ended in the flesh. 56. And now, my children, I shall give unto you an example of that which I have spoken, so that ye shall not be confused in this thing. For I have seen this among you, even this judgment which ye have made of something that is good as being evil. And because of this thing that I have seen, and the judgments ye have made, there is much contention among you, and there will be many of you who shall suffer because of these things in the spirit prison as I have explained it unto you. 57. Behold, there are those among you who have condemned others in that which they eat and drink. Yea, there are those of you who have cursed your neighbours because they eat the flesh of beasts and cook their food, which the eating of flesh and cooking are contrary to the strict laws of health that the Lord hath given unto us. And ye believe that because they eat this flesh and cook their food, that they shall be condemned before God and chastised by him. 58. And in this thing ye have caused much anger and contention among yourselves. But in this thing ye have judged your neighbours incorrectly, and ye have become angry against them, and prejudiced your minds and hearts against them that do these things. And your children see your examples, and grow up with this prejudice already in their hearts, and this prejudice turneth them cold towards those who do the things that your children have been taught are evil. 59. And because of this anger and this prejudice towards them, ye have caused those who do these things that ye perceive to be evil to have anger and prejudice towards you. And they also teach their children this prejudice, which divideth us further into families and factions that have anger one towards another. And in this anger ye are disobeying the commandments of God and not in that in which ye eat. 60. For the laws of health associated with that which we should eat, and that which we should abstain from eating, pertain only to this world and our mortal flesh. And those who use their free agency to disobey the laws of health, receive the recompense for their disobedience in this world. And this recompense is the poor health and diminished strength and the disease and pestilence that causes them to suffer during the days of their probation. But once they are dead and have cast off the flesh, 
That is the end of their punishment, and they will receive no further punishment for that which they have chosen to eat and drink. 61. But those of you who have become angry with them, and have hardened your hearts against them, because of your prejudice and your bias against the things that ye have judged to be evil, will suffer the recompense of your anger, not only in this life, but in the prison of the next, as I have explained it unto you. 62. And when, as a spirit, ye observe that your children and their children, even unto many generations, do carry on the hate and the prejudice that ye have caused because of your misjudgment, then ye shall suffer in this state of misery until the end of the cause of this hate and prejudice that ye have taught unto your children. 63. Therefore, my beloved children, love one another and do good to each other, and I would that ye should know that it doth not matter to the Lord what goeth in the mouth of another according to his free will and choice, but it mattereth to him how ye treat one another, and this is the only thing that mattereth unto him. 64. And I would that ye should remember the things that I have spoken unto you regarding the kingdom of God, and the different glories that pertain thereto which are the glories of happiness that all the children of God shall inherit according to the individual desires of happiness of each. 65. Remember that I have explained unto you that each of us determined before we were born into mortality which of these glories of happiness best suited our own desires of happiness. And this time of probation was the time that we would prove to ourselves that the choice that we have made for ourselves is indeed that which we desire. 66. And since each of our desires of happiness are different, then those things that we believe are good for us might be things that are evil unto another. And likewise those things that might be evil for us might bring happiness to another. And for this reason, it would be hard to make a righteous judgment. 67. But the commandments of the Lord that I am giving unto you at this time must be obeyed by all. For they are truly commandments that will bring us the happiness that we all desire. And if another chooseth an action for himself that is not contrary to the commandments of God, even the commandments of his gospel, which are the commandments that I am giving unto you at this time, then that person is justified in this action, if it bringeth him joy. 68. And we do not do anything except that we might have joy therein. And the things that we do that do not bring us joy, then we may know for a surety that they are evil to us. And those things that bring us joy are surely good and righteous to us. But remember again, my beloved children, that what bringeth joy to one person doth not mean that the same joy will be experienced by another. 69. Therefore I would that ye judge not at all, but let our Father be the judge of us all. And this is what I have caused to be taught among you, even in the churches that the Lord has suffered us to establish among us for our sake even that all of us shall be brought before the judgment bar of God and be judged according to the commandments that he hath given unto us. 70. And for this reason I give unto all of you these commandments. And if a commandment is not given by me at this time, then that commandment was not given unto me and your mother Eve by the Lord. And therefore this commandment cannot be a commandment of God, but is a commandment of men. And if it is a commandment of men, then you will not be held accountable for it at the judgment bar of God. 71. And now I would that ye should be aware of the commandments of men, for these commandments of men shall usually lead you away from the commandments of God. Therefore I speak plainly unto you of those commandments that we have received from the mouth of God. 72. And the Lord commanded us, saying, Thou shalt not commit adultery, and whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. Behold, I give unto you a commandment that ye suffer none of these things to enter into your heart. 73. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, 
causeth her to commit adultery, and whoso shall marry her who is divorced committeth adultery. 74. And now I would that ye should know that in the garden of Eden the Lord commanded me to cleave unto Eve and become one with her. And I was commanded to care for her and stay at her side all the days of my life. And because she was to be engaged in the bringing forth of children, I was commanded that I should make sure she was provided with those things that she desired to make her happy, and to sustain her life and the lives of our children. 75. And ye are all our children, and ye also know that I have spent all the days of my life in labour to sustain your lives and give unto you those things that make you happy. But in all these things I have depended upon Eve as my companion, and it is she whom I have been commanded to love and honour, and she hath loved me and honoured me all the days of my life, which hath brought me much joy and hath fulfilled my desires of happiness concerning her. 76. But even though I was commanded to love and honour her by the Father, I did not need to be commanded in this thing, for I truly do love her, and it is I that am indebted to the Father because of her. 77. And I have cause to be taught among you that it is not the right of a man to ask that a woman be his wife, for it is the responsibility of a man to live his life honourably, and cause that a woman should desire him. And if the woman hath desired him as her husband, then it is because she believeth that he will fulfil the desires of her happiness. 78. And this is the law of the heavens which I have caused to be taught unto you in mortality, because of the physical strength that a mortal man hath over a woman. For if a man was left to the carnal desires of his heart, then he would force himself upon a woman and cause her to accept him by his brute strength over her. But this thing is most abominable before God, and any man that doeth this thing shall be condemned by God. 79. And again, any man that would do this thing shall not be given the eternal body of a man in the kingdoms of glory that permit this type of body. And only those spirits that are worthy of this body and desire it to serve others shall receive this power in the kingdom of God. And those spirits who desire to be women in this same glory shall choose for themselves the man that they would have as a husband and they shall do this according to their knowledge of this man and his righteousness. 80. And I am saddened that there are many of you, my sons, among us, who have corrupted the law of marriage, as I have caused it to be taught unto you. For ye deceive the women, and pretend to be righteous, and pretend that ye are willing to fulfil her desire of happiness, so that the woman will choose you and desire to make you her husband. And ye lust after her and the dowry that is given, and not that ye should serve her and provide for her happiness. 81. And because it is by the free will and choice of a woman to make a man her husband, she is bound by the covenant that she shall make unto him. And through this covenant she hath obligated herself to this man all the days of her life. And for this reason a man hath no right to put away his wife, if it so be that he accepteth her desire to make him her husband. 82. And a man shall not be compelled in this world or in the next, in the glory that permitteth eternal unions, to accept the desire of a woman. Nevertheless, in the glory of the kingdom of God, where these unions are permitted, there will be only righteous men, and a righteous man shall never deny a desirous woman from being his eternal companion and they shall only desire this union to serve others, for in this their blessing and their joy are complete. 83. And ye shall not engage in any sexual relations of any kind, even those actions that lead up to the desire of these relations, unless ye have been chosen by a woman to be her husband, and the woman shall remain pure and untouched by other men until the day that she maketh a decision regarding her choice of a husband. 84. For every woman shall one day be the wife of a husband, if she so chooses. And if it so be that a woman committeth fornication, or anything like unto it, 
she shall commit adultery against her future husband. And any man that committed fornication or anything like unto it with another woman hath committed adultery with the future wife of another man, who the woman hath not yet chosen for herself. 85. And if a woman hath committed fornication or anything like unto it, and maketh a lie to the man that she is desirous to take unto herself as a husband, and presenteth herself as clean and pure before him, then she can be put away or divorced from him to whom she made the lie. But if that man be a righteous man, then he shall forgive his wife for the things which she hath done before she made the covenant with him. And her sins will be remembered no more before the Lord, and it will be counted unto the man as righteousness. 86. But if he doth not desire to have her as a wife, he shall be justified before the Lord in a divorcement. And likewise also shall it be for the woman who hath been lied to by a man. 87. And there shall be no other reason that a divorcement shall be given. For this reason the daughters of God must be cautious, and prove those whom they would have as their husbands. Yea, they must assure themselves that the man whom they choose as their husband is worthy before God. And ye shall test them, and see if they live by the commandments of God, and not by the commandments of men. And if they live by the commandments of God, then ye shall receive from them the happiness that ye desire. But if they live by the commandments of men, then ye shall experience misery and strife in a union with them. 88. And there is a sure test, my beloved daughters, that will help you that ye shall know whether a man followeth the commandments of God or the commandments of men. For behold, it is the natural desire of all men to engage in fornication, and anything like unto it, whenever they are allowed to do so by a woman. Therefore, if a man attempteth fornication with you, or anything like unto it, then ye shall know that he disregardeth the commandments of God, and hath followed the instincts of his own carnal desires. And if it so be that ye still desire this man, then ye shall experience the strife of which I have spoken, and in the eternal worlds your union shall not exist. 89. And it shall be that there are very few men who are righteous, and are willing to obey the commandments of God in all things. And ye shall realize that if it so be that you depend on the righteousness of men to give you children, then ye would be barren and childless all the days of your life. 90. And if ye are a righteous woman and are desirous to have children, then ye shall be justified in creating these children with an unrighteous man. If it so be that he is chosen by you, because ye cannot find a righteous man among you. 91. And if your desires are righteous, then shall the Lord ease the burden of this strife between you and your unrighteous husband, and shall bring you great joy in your posterity. And if ye remain faithful all the days of your life, even that ye keep all the commandments of the Lord, then shall ye be blessed with the choice of a righteous husband in the kingdom of God, if that so be your desire. 92. But if your husband is unrighteous, and obeyeth not the commandments of the Lord in all things, then are ye justified in a divorcement from him. But in all these things ye shall judge only according to the commandments of God, and not according to the commandments of men. Beware that ye are not deceived by men who put themselves up above you and give you commandments that are not of God. 93. Let no man deceive you, and say unto you that the Lord hath commanded him to take another wife unto himself. For the Lord would never command such a thing. For as it hath been explained unto you, it is the choice of a woman to choose a husband. And if a woman cometh unto you, and desireth to take your husband also as her own husband, then ye shall have the decision to take her unto yourself as a sister wife to your husband. But if ye do this thing to your sister, then ye must know that she shall be equal to you in the eyes of your husband. 94. And there shall be no man that shall be given the power and authority to give a woman to another man. Neither shall the power be given to any to choose a husband for any woman. 
But unto some who are righteous men of God, the Lord suffereth to be given the authority to counsel with the women who find themselves without husbands, because of the wickedness of men. And it will be given unto this righteous man to seal this covenant before God. 95. And if any woman taketh a sister wife unto herself for her husband, then it will be counted unto her as righteousness before God. But if she doth not allow another woman to take her righteous husband as her own, then it shall not be counted unto her as unrighteous before God. For the Lord delighteth in the chastity and honour of women. 96. Behold, I have been loyal and faithful to Eve all the days of my life. In honour I sustain her, and cherish each moment I am blessed with her presence. I have had no lascivious thoughts, and no lustful desires have entered into my heart all the days of my life. And I am one with her, and because of these things we enjoy a fullness of happiness in the union within which we have been blessed. 97. And now I say unto you, If ye shall love your spouses as we have loved one another, then ye also shall have this joy, which joy causes the happiness that we share. And because of this happiness, the Lord hath established this union of a man and a woman, and hath given unto us the commandments pertaining to this union that shall be maintained in righteousness. And because of righteousness, this union shall exist in the kingdom of the Father for ever. End of chapter 19.